Hey guys, welcome to chapter 7 and this section is going to be on testing or test driven development in Rails and testing is something that's not needed um, as, you, as you already know we built a, an entire app without doing any tests but for more intricate uh, complicated apps that have lots of models and controllers um, you really should do some testing um, in this section or in this series rather I'm not going to go deep into test driven development um, because it can get really complicated there's, a, there's multiple types of frameworks you can use um, RSpec and there's some other ones um, we're just going to do a standard unit test um, that it, it, we're able to do with just rails um, so why would we write tests uh, we would write tests because, for one thing, they're very easy to, well, some tests, unit tests are, are pretty easy to write, um, and what it does is it just, it produces skeletons of test code um, that you can't see, it's in the background, um, and, and it's creating these skeletons while you're creating models and controllers, so you don't have to set up testing before you, you build an app. Uh, it actually runs alongside um, as you're building your app it creates certain directories and certain files in the test directory that you can that you can later on use um, by simply running your rails tests you can ensure that your code runs the d with the desired functionality and that's even after editing and refactoring your code uh, rails tests can also stimulate browser requests without you having to go and use a browser so you can test if certain pages are loading or if um, certain forms can be filled out by users uh, different things that you would normally use the browser for you don't have to uh, with TDD or test driven development alright so test environment and database uh, as you probably know, if you've been going along with this series, Rails has three uh, test and, not test, but three environments: uh, development, test, and production. Uh, so far, we have been dealing with the development env environment. Uh, we have the production environment on Heroku, and we haven't created a separate test environment or a separate test database yet. Uh, but we will be doing that in in the coming tutorial or the coming section after this um, when you're using Heroku they it's they tell you to use one database for development testing and production but that's only the remote on the remote app on Heroku locally you can have uh, multiple databases for, uh, for development testing and production so the test folder um, all Rails installations come with a, a folder called test and within that there's five more folders which are fixtures, unit, functional, performance, integration and then there's a test helper um, document or file and I'll just go through these real quick uh, fixtures is basically um, organization of your tests it keeps them all in order um, and just gives structure to to all your tests. Uh, unit is for testing models and that's what we'll be getting into um, in the programming section of this chapter or this section. Um, functional is where your controller tests are located. Performance uh, for tests for speed and memory and, and all that good stuff. Site performance. Um, in integration is for I guess it's for in controllers that interact with each other I guess um, and then the test helper it's it's the default configuration file and it's included in all all test files uh, you'll see this at the top require test helper okay so that's that so fixtures as I said um, they allow us to set up organization for our tests uh, and we can set up customizations as well and fixtures run on the YAML format and that gives us a human readable file to work with um, each fixture will have a title along with some key value pairs 
So we have the post one fixture and it has um, the name key and the value and the created author. Um, this is obviously just a sample. This could be anything. This could be a user. It could be anything at all. So that's just a sample. Um, you can also use embedded Ruby in YAML files. Uh, so you can use the tags, the percent tags, uh, if you want to put some dynamic content in there. Um, and you can actually access fixtures in other files. I didn't put that on here, but you can access them like this. Uh, if we were in the post fixture and you wanted to a you wanted to access this fixture, the post one, you just have that. You'd put that, and you can also do um, certain fields as well. Uh, you could do this post one dot name, and that would give you this here a sample post. So that's that's fixtures and generating resources um, when you generate controllers models or scaffolds uh, rails will create these files for you and no matter what the we for the stuff we've already created we already have files for we have the uh, unit tests we have fixtures for the posts and you guys, you guys know we have models um, unit tests deal with models and functional tests to deal with controllers and this is just a uh, scaffold command we've used this before and we're actually going to use this again in the second part of this section uh, test stubs the file you see here the po sorry about that the post test dot rb it's in the test unit folder uh, these are called test stubs and this is where we define our tests and this is what's there by default. If we go now and we open our pest post test RB file, this is what we'll see. And it's just um, it requires the test helper, as I said. All unit tests will have this at the top, and then we have the class, which extends the active support test case class. And in here, uh, they just have this this um, just sample test here called the truth. Uh, you would define test and you could use a human readable name like this um, but in reality it's when rails reads this it's reading it as um, like this test the truth the, <laughs> the truth so the machine readable way of doing it has the underscores instead of spaces but you can use this format if you want to put quotes around it and you can use a a human readable form and then assert true is just um, it's checking if the test is true or false uh, there's a lot of different assert statements we could do uh, we could do assert something like this assert post um, is valid uh, valid so we do stuff like this so we'd have Actually, I can show you in the next slide or a couple slides down. We're actually going to do a, a sample test. This is a little tough to understand. Um, the test names, like I just explained, uh, they have names like this test valid password or like this, which is camel case. Um, but in the test stubs, we, we usually use more readable names, something like this, uh, you know, with capital letters and spaces and just. Uh, human readable stuff. So this here, uh, test the truth in quotes is the same as this. This is how the this is how Rails reads it. This is how we we like to read it or write it. And assert true. Uh, it's an assertion, which is code that evaluates an object for expected results. Assertions can check things like if a if one value is equal to another value or if if something's nil or if a line of code throws an exception or not if a user's password is greater than six characters uh, anything like that any kind of um, valuation uh, and all tests have to have at least one assertion even if it's just assert true like the sample uh, test above so preparing your app for testing we want to migrate the database. We want to make sure that it's up to date. 
um, and we actually want to use our test database so we would go into uh, in the next video what we're going to do is go into our um, database conf configuration file and we're going to actually create another database for testing uh, and we can do that easily through PG admin uh, you can use the command line as well um, and if you want to migrate the test database we could make sure that it's choosing the test database with this command here just telling it that the environment we want is test as opposed to development and then we want to recreate the database from the current scheme so this rake command here would take what we have in our development database and load it into our uh, test database because we don't want to mess with the development or the production database when testing and running tests you run them in the command line with something like this this would run the, the post unit test for the model um, to run a certain test you could put the name on the end of it like the test the truth this actually would run all tests in this folder or in this I'm sorry in this file if you want to single one out you could use this format and your results will look like this um, if your test fails it'll be it'll say one failure or however many failures um, and if you have some kind of error in your syntax you'll get an error um, but just because you get an error doesn't mean that the test is failing it's usually a uh, syntax error or something like that and a simple sample test would be uh, you know if we want to test if the post has a title so we can actually go and create a new post with this line here and you'll see here we have some title so we, we use the assertion to see if the post is valid and it's gonna it's gonna pass no matter what unless you have this inside your post model you want the title to validate it's required so the presence is true so it's required um, so if you have this in your post model and you go and write this test it'll fail because it's not there the title is not there um, if you put it back if you put something in there then it's gonna pass and that's just a very simple test I'm not gonna get into um, high, highly advanced testing or any other frameworks um, it's not really needed for what we did or what we're doing here so uh, that's it so let's move on to the programming section of this I mean the programming video of this section and we'll start learning how to test